friends, Leslie from A Friend of Knit With. Welcome to episode 52 of my knitting channel. Today is April 19th. It is a Friday morning and it is so much earlier than I usually feel. Uh, I filmed a podcast yesterday and I had a seed in my tooth. Trader Joe's has these amazing crackers that are just full of seeds. And I had a bite before I came to my, I had, I had brushed my teeth, everything got all ready, had a bite of a cracker, sat down to film, filmed the whole thing, and then went to edit it. I had a seed in my tooth and I was giggling at myself and I told my kids and they were like, oh mom, you're not going to post that, are you? Because we had dinner together last night and I was like, mm-hmm. I said, my friends won't mind. They're just there to hear about me me talk about my passion like theirs and they they said absolutely not and then I talked to my sister and she was like yeah absolutely not so here I am filming again I don't have anything in my teeth because I just brushed them I am having a cup of coffee and yes I just witnessed the most gorgeous fiery sunrise I am happy I woke up early. I am usually up, but I don't know. It was an unusual sunrise. I'm usually up knitting at this hour, drinking my coffee. So anything related to yarn and knitting, I am happy to be doing. I haven't been on here since the beginning of March. It was right before we went on a trip. Um, and I made that party bow and I wore it. And I want to tell you all about it. Uh, but let's talk about my finished object that I'm wearing first. So this is the Violetta Pullover by Claudia Quintanella, and she owns Unit Toronto, and she is an amazing designer. She has another pattern out that I'm getting ready to cast on for that I'll share also, but her work is just beautiful. So anyhow, this is the Violetta. I used Knitting for Olive to make it. I can't say that this was the quickest knit for me, but mostly because of my mind and some errors that I made. I'll tell you when I cast on. I was, yeah, December something, hold on, December 11th. I cast on for this December 11th. And somebody asked me how I, you know, do my, this, I had a picture of this on Instagram just kind of in the background and they asked about it. So I always just tape, if I'm following a chart, I tape it into the my notebook just so I don't have a loose paper running around. I mean, I always have my patterns like in a sleeve and then, but I don't usually mark on this. And then I, um, you know, just put all my notes and I write out the charts and then the rows uh, and then I can cross off the rows. And then any notes that I want to try to remember to remind myself or anything that I want to remind myself to tell you, I write that in here. And yeah, I've done a chart. I've done this kind of a notebook for ever. My mom did it and I have many. I've thrown away many uh, old patterns. And then I also recently, because so many people are so creative, I just started to like um, maybe doodle in it a little bit. And yes, this was the party bow that I wore. Oh, I'll tell you a quick story. I'll tell you about this right now because since I'm on it, but uh, some of those pictures I put in there, which is kind of fun. I wore the party bow, it was my birthday, and I was gonna use the fashion tape and kind of tape it on because it's kind of a floppy knit uh so that just did not work so if you're gonna make one and it's a really fun occasion project uh and where i actually took the feathers out of it and i am going to just share it amongst my friend group so everyone can get a chance to wear the party bow doodle it up however they want but i uh 
just pinned it instead. Libby pinned it for me, my daughter Libby. Uh, so, and it stayed perfectly, you know, across the suit there. I'll pop a picture. It was just a really fun addition to the evening. Uh, so if you ever have an occasion to wear a party bow, I mean, you can wear it daily if you want, doesn't matter, but it really is fun for an occasion. I was celebrating a big birthday, as you can see. Um, and I wanted to share a story that just really resonated with me and I thought it was really fun. I have a friend who's now a friend. She's a customer at uh, the store and she has now become a friend. Hi, Robbie. And she came in and she's like, oh yeah, hey, welcome to the sixth floor. And I hadn't seen her in a while and I hadn't been there in a while. And I was like, oh, hey, yeah, thanks. Uh, and I thought she's calling the store the sixth floor. And she's like, it's way more fun on the sixth floor. And I'm still like, it is fun in here. You're right. I love this store uh, where I work. And she, I guess, realized that I had no idea what she was talking about. And she goes, wait, did you just turn 60? And I said, yes. And she said, yeah, welcome to the sixth floor. The view was way better on the sixth floor everything's better on the sixth floor. And I thought that was just such a clever way of looking at it. You just keep getting onto a higher floor. The view is better. You know more. Everything's just better. And it's so true. She came out of the dressing room wearing something and, you know, asking advice. And I was like, yeah, it's cute. It's fine. She's like, oh no, we don't do fine on the sixth floor. No. So, Anyhow, it's just a really lovely way to look at it. And, oh, there, go, there goes a deer, a whole herd of deer. Uh, and, um, excuse me, I was distracted because uh, they eat all of our plant, plants, all of the vegetation. They ate all my hydrangeas last year. All right, I digress. But anyhow, when you think about it, the second floor, you know, you're just figuring it out. Sorry, second floors out there, but I don't think I have very many of them, according to my analytics. But the 30s, you know, every year, every decade, you just get to go to a higher floor. And it's wonderful and lovely. Of course, you know, looking in the mirror can be a little harder sometimes, but who cares? We've earned all of those lines and wrinkles. So anyhow, um, yes. I am now on the sixth floor. All right, back to my Violetta. But that was such a fabulous trip. We took all of our kids um, to France and went to Paris and Provence. And, you know, if you ever get an opportunity, get yourself there. It was just truly, you know, one of the highlights of my life for sure. But the Violetta, it used, I can't remember, four balls of each to start with, I think. So I knew I wasn't going to have enough really. And I should have just ordered some yarn then, but I held off. And then with all of my mistakes, by the time I actually, well, there weren't really mistakes. I need to not be so confident in my knitting sometimes where I am following, thinking I know what's going ahead. So I had knit up to here and then I realized I had for got to add these cables. I kept knitting for, you know, the next morning, maybe thinking, hmm, it's okay. Maybe I'll just be all stuck in it here and here. Then I realized that, no, I wanted the cables there. So you add the cables whenever you, you're doing your raglan increases. And when you get six stitches, I think, of the stock in it, you would add a cable. So I ripped all the way back to, well, I ripped back to where I should have started and then I couldn't get it on the needle correctly. So I ripped it back out to the collar or to the neckline, which is a folded neckline. And I absolutely love, I do have a cami under here because you could see your bra. I mean, I don't really think that it would be a big deal at all because it is pretty dense, but up close, you know, but that's a look too. So you could have that look. Uh, but anyhow, 
I wanted, you know, this folded neckline and there are short rows in the back here in the ribbing. Let's see, and I tried so hard to get those short rows in the pattern. So that was another, I kept, you know, things were taking me like weeks to figure things out. Uh, so just do it to pattern because I've made the mistakes and you don't need to. And, you know, remember to add the cables along the way. Um, I made a medium. However, I cast on for a small. I like my necklines a little tighter, so I cast on for a small, and then I increased until the medium. So that's what this is. And, you know, the length is great. I ran out of the yarn, like I said, so I have these only by accident. But when I tried it on for my husband, originally with just the sleeve, well, I tried it on and I said to him, oh my gosh, I think I'm gonna make this three quarter sleeves. Then my yarn arrived, different dye lot, then I had to make it three quarter sleeves. So anyhow, in my slippers. Uh, I, yeah, I like it three quarter sleeve. I think cause it's kind of open and airy and kind of lends itself to that. Um, and I didn't have the yarn for it. When I, Received my yarn, this style out was different. This was exactly the same. So I, even the helical knitting, I'll pop a picture of the two different dye lots, what they look like. And I knew, I knew I didn't have enough yarn from the get go. I should have just ordered it immediately, but another thing you can learn from my mistake. So now I have this extra yarn, which is, <clears throat> nice. I can. I was thinking about holding it together and making a pair of toast mitts, um, but we'll see. So this is the Violetta. I think it came off my needles at the perfect time of year because it is like a springtime sweater. It's kind of a lighter, airier, you know, feel to it. All right, I need some coffee. The other thing off my needles is the Dartmoor. And I have been hosting a knit along with Gina from Skin Cocaine and Margaret from Bobaleras. And this is mine. I will show it to you on. I did have a few headaches with the Dartmoor. Mostly because, again, I didn't have enough yarn. Two sweaters without enough yarn. I was with Margaret and Gina at Cake Palooza, and we saw Jan from Forever Yarn in Doylestown, Pennsylvania. She had a magnificent hot pink vest on, and we, you know, went bonkers over it and bought the yarn. She used La Vienna May Winsley Worsted along with holding it with Kumo, La Vienna May Kumo. So together they make this just dreamy fabric that just, oh. So she didn't have sleeves on hers and I, that's what I wanted to make. That's what Margaret wanted to make. I think that Gina might've bought some of the yarn, but she was gonna use some of hers. And then I think that she was gonna put her sleeves on. Smart girl, yarn looked amazing in it, but I just did not like, it on me. So I put it over on Instagram. It and I tried to finish just this edge off with ribbing. And then the other side I was gonna I had two options. The other one I was gonna fold in and have kind of like a shoulder pad look almost like a big broad shoulders. So I put that on Instagram and I asked for votes and everyone loved the rib and thank you if you voted. Uh, and then at the end of the day, I decided, no, I think I want just want sleeves. I want a sweater. I've wanted a beautiful cream sweater for a long time. Just a plain one. Except this little detail in the back is just amazing. This icorn cast on. I called Forever Yarn and I actually was able to talk to Yan on the phone. <clears throat> Excuse me. And she could not get, she was out of the Kumo in winter and could not get any more 
and I don't think they're going to die anymore, or, or I can't remember what she said, but it would be months. And so, she, you know, she, I could just order the Wensley worsted from her, but then I could have done this, that and done the sleeves all the same. Anyhow, I had already blocked this without the sleeves, so it grew a lot. And so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to use what I had. I had, you know, I kept weighing my yarn. I had maybe 100 grams left of the Kumo. And I can't remember how much I had left of the Wensley Worsted. But I thought, you know what, I'm just going to see what I can do here. So I used Magic Loop on both sleeves, the um, interchangeable needles, and I just went back and forth till they could be the same length, <clears throat> thinking that they might not even be able to be long-sleeved. And I did get a full sleeve. I also, another detail I forgot to share is, the armhole on the Dartmoor is extremely long. So I'm to about here. I ended up closing it up, just seaming it together there and then picking up. So I have a much shorter armhole sleeve, but fits me. And that saved a lot of yarn there. And what else? And then I took, so when I, had both sleeves going, I ended up taking about three inches off the body. I could add a little more ribbing and I might do that. I have this much left of the Wensley worsted. I don't have any mohair left, but I figured I could even just, I have another white mohair that I might run it with. And I think that would be fine just on the cuff there or on the ribbing there because oh, I love it. All right, let me try it on for you. I think somebody's waking up. All right, spent a quick minute saying good morning, getting some coffee, quiet on set. All right, where was I? I was gonna try on the Dartmoor for you. All right, I haven't woven in any ends. The one, the sleeve length is just perfect for me. Uh, the one thing, I would like it a tiny bit longer. Um, you know, it's pretty cropped. Uh, and I think I can get, I think I can probably get another inch on here with just this. The yardage, it, it, I don't know, it just goes, it, there's a lot of yardage I feel like with that. So anyhow, I have wanted a cream luxurious sweater for a long time. Uh, and this, this is it. This is it. The detail is amazing. If you um, follow, if you don't follow Margaret from Bobolaris, you really must. I'm going to link her below uh, because her Dartmoor is absolutely amazing. I'll have Gina and Margaret linked below, but Gina, how is your Dartmoor going? I haven't seen it. Uh, Margaret's, she finished early, the end of March, I think. She did a contrasting color for her cast on, and then she also made it, so she did not put on sleeves. She decreased up until like the lower rib cage here. So it's tighter here with these gorgeous, like the vest version on her, I think she said it was just so wide that it seems more like, it's not like a vest, it's like a, short sleeve almost, but the sleeves are just luminous and beautiful. And with the contrasting color, with the I-cord, can you imagine like if this was like a hot pink or something? It's just the kind of color I like. It would be back there and yes, be so cute. So remember, you can make these sweaters, every sweater in your closet and that you're knitting and working on, you can make it fit you. So just, Take your time, think about it. These were two great examples. I'm gonna take it off because it's still a little damp. All right, so that is the Dartmoor. And I used two skeins of, 
I think I bought three skeins of Wensley Worsted and two skeins of Kumo. That would not be enough to do like the regular sweater uh, version, especially if you're gonna make those very large sleeves. Um, but yes, I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm just gonna finish this and I'm gonna run it with just a white mohair that I have and yes tie in the ends and call this one done. So I am very, very excited to have that. I also, one other mention, I went up a needle size. I used a 10. I think the pattern calls for a nine. I used a 10 because it was just a little too dense and boy, am I ever glad I did. I think that's another reason I had more yarn. So the gauge was just looser. So anyhow, moving on. I have some mohair on my lips. Uh, the other thing, when I was traveling, I did have the Dartmoor with me, but it was white and there were two balls and I I wish I would have brought this bag. I wanted to show you. I'll show you next time for sure. Uh, it is just like a fanny pack, but one of those bigger ones. And you can throw it over your shoulder like a person that sits here and it fit one ball of yarn in a project instead of like a sweater. And it was fabulous. And I made toast mitts because I usually always take a ball or two of yarn, especially if it's, you know, a trip like that where I know I can't whip out my sweater and start working on it. But I can whip these out over coffee, wine, champagne, whatever. Uh, so I made the toast mitts, the, this pair, I saw um, on the Knitting Posse podcast, Kim made them out of the same vintage Barocco. So you can get two pairs out of that. I'm um, um, just getting ready to cast off on this one. And so I'll have two pairs and they make just wonderful gifts. And then I had a Lang cashmere left from my uh, husband's scarf that I made him. So I made a pair and kind of could have gotten this longer because I had this, but I only had one ball and with me and I didn't measure it out. Anyhow, I mean, I just, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I wish these would have been longer though. So, but it took more than one even to make them this length. You don't have as much yardage as like on a Clinton Hill cashmere pair. I mean, ball, there must be more yardage and you can make one pair out of that yarn. So, but they are just scrumptious out of this line cashmere too. Uh, so that's another little reminder. And then while we were traveling, I did get, I didn't buy any yarn, but somebody gave me a birthday gift, Libby's friend. And she went to Spain right before she met us in France to see a friend and brought me this. And it is just right up my alley color-wise. It is from Spain. It's a super wash merino. And yeah, I'd like a sweater in this and a sweater in this place. <laughs> but I don't have enough yarn. So I don't know. I'm sure it's a bulky yarn. I think I can figure out a hat or something out of that, but that was really yummy and I was so appreciative of that. And then for my birthday, another friend gave me this oh, Juniper Moon Saxony and it is 75% cashmere and 25% super fine merino. And oh, I love this color too. I have three balls. I might have to go get some more so I can make a sweater or a vest or something. It's really yummy yarn. Okay, I received from my friend Suzanne, who Suzanne and I have been friends on the internet, on the big bad web for a long time from our blogging days. I still so occasionally write on mine, but she has, she, I don't think she writes on hers anymore, do you Suzanne? But she sent me a little birthday box and in it was this cute little, okay, this, here it is. It's called a snippets jar, she told me. That's her little 
uh, Instagram handle, so Rodden it. And that's so clever. It's very her. And uh, she used, I think this looks like an old yogurt jar. And she made this little snippets holder with the snippets for a snippets jar. Is that just so cute? So, you know, when you're weaving in your tails and you're cutting your threads, you just put them in there. Love that. That is just so clever. Um, I don't know. I have to ask her if there's a pattern for that. Is there a pattern, Suzanne? And then, okay. Well, she also made this, which I'm going to use as a coaster. It is going to stay on my desk. Love, love, love it. And uh, she, years ago, she made me what I'm getting ready to show you. And I have loved it. I've asked her for the pattern. I can't remember if it's her pattern or or there's a pattern, but I will share with you uh, when I ask her. These are what she sent and they are for my sisters, which was just the absolute most thoughtful. And did you see what it is? And I have carried these forever. They go on every adventure with me, every journey. Uh, look at her little, I'm going to put this back in there, Shelly, the right way, I promise. This one is for Shelly. Uh, there's her little label. Here it is. And it is a huh, tea bag holder. Can you love that anymore? So they are really great little gifts. So for your tea lovers, I will share the link below. Um, but I honestly have this in my carry-on on every trip and, you know, often in the airport, I just get hot water and then I have my, my favorite teas with me. And yeah, it is just a beautiful thing. If you're traveling, you're in a hotel, you can have your same comforts from home. And then she gave me some uh, little tea bags too, with a sweet, sweet little note. So thank you so much, Suzanne. That was just the sweetest. All right, I'm going to quickly show you. I feel like I am talking a lot this morning. Maybe my coffee. I'm going to show you what's on my needles. Um, I'm just going to show some other friends gave me this amazing bag, which I just love, and I am using it as a knitting bag. It's a purse. It doesn't have pockets or anything inside, but I love throwing um, a project in my purse anyhow. So it's kind of serving all the points, all the purposes. Um, all right. So what do you cast on for when you want to go, when you're going to Ireland, you're planning a trip to Ireland? Well, an all over cable sweater. So I cast on last night for the Billy pullover and it is just a fun little all over cable knit. I am using Cascade 220 yarn that I found here in Pittsburgh. A store I didn't even know existed. So it's called Wild Child Yarns. And I was so happy to have a new, I could not believe I had another yarn shop in the area. So anyhow, I am using just the natural and making a natural. Uh, my friend said, Robbie, uh, most people just buy a sweater there. <gasps> not knitters, we knit our sweater. Uh, so that's on my uh, needles. I'm going in July, so I have some time for that. And then the other thing, since I'm going away, we're going to Zion and uh, Zion and Bryce. And I don't want to take that it's too, you know, you have to think too much. And I want something where I can just knit away. So, and I've wanted to cast on for a summer sweater. There are so many cute ones out there right now, but I've always wanted the Moonset Tea. So, I you know you've seen it. It's been out there, I don't know for how long, but it's just a basic little tea. And I love the little neckline. 
And so I had some of the uh, Buttercup cotton from Pearl Soho, it's out of stock. I mean, uh, discontinued in my stash. So I'm going to line this up today, edit this video, pack, and uh, upload the video. <laughs> And then I'm going to take this on my trip. So I'll cast on for this probably tomorrow, the Moonset Tea. So, but if you're looking for, there are so many cute new patterns out there. This is just, a lot of people have made it, I know, and seem to have a lot of success. It's very wearable. And I think in this gray for me, it will be very wearable too. So, you know, I'm about wearing your nets. And uh, I really think about when I'm looking at a pattern, would I buy something like that? Would I spend money buying it? Or do I just like it because it's colorful or it looks like it has some new techniques that I haven't tried? And that's all okay too, because then you can make it for someone. But I'm trying to put my time and effort and money into projects that I want to wear. So I've done this for a few years now and it's working out well. So any way you want to knit though, <clears throat> it's a beautiful thing. All right, the other thing I'm going to cast on for, hopefully not, in, well, not until next week, but is the Asuzena pullover. And that is also by Claudia Quintanilla. And she is, an amazing designer. She just is so thoughtful with her designs. Did I tell you that she wrote this pattern top down and bottom up? Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. So I will pop a picture up here of the uh, Susanna, but it is color work, not too busy. I decided I wanted to make it the dominant color light and the flowers darker. So I thought, wow, wouldn't that be beautiful with black? So yes, it would. But hand knitting is a different story because especially with the mohair, I would just be carrying it. You're always grabbing those little mohairs so you're gonna see it. I tried to use just the mohair there and make a kind of a subtle, and but you're still carrying it behind the white so you're just gonna see your floats and then that was with both strands, the merino and the uh, mohair. And yeah, it just turns the fabric kind of gray. So that wasn't going to work, unfortunately. So I ordered camel for my contrasting color. So I'm going to do camel and white where these will be the flowers. So you cast on with this and then you, this will be the main body and then the little flower details in the body with the camel color. I think that should work. I'm probably not even gonna do a little swatch. It's just gonna have to work or else I'm just gonna have an off-white sweater. But this is also from Unit Toronto. They have a huge selection of knitting for all of yarn. Look, I love their bag. And yes, yeah, so I don't know when I'm gonna get that on my needles, but in the future for sure. And um, all right, I think that's all I have for today. Uh, I hope you love what you're working on. I hope it's bringing you tons of joy. And if it's not, it's okay. Either make it your own or frog that baby. There are too many things out there that are fabulous to work on. So until next time, remember you always have a friend to knit with. All right, take care.